On my Signalant uh, 1202 scope, there is an FFT function, and uh, I can use that to calculate the DBM uh, reading for a signal. And what basically the probe is doing, it's measuring a voltage coming into the scope. Then it takes that voltage, and uh, you set the impedance for that circuit you're measuring, and it takes that voltage, calculates the power into that load, and calculates the DBM. And here I'm going to demonstrate how that works. So right now I've got my um, channel 1 of my scope probe here going to the uh, Park um, SigGen prototype, and I'm measuring uh, uh, clock 0, which is set for 4.91 megahertz. And right now, that's the signal right there. And I've got my uh, time base set to 10 milliseconds, so you can't really see the, uh, uh, the waveform. I did that because the FFT needs a lot of data um, coming in. It, it needs a very wide time frame to sample the data to get the uh, appropriate resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the, uh, the FFT function here and automatically see a peak. I've already got it set up to be the center is 4913 megahertz and I'm using 100 uh, hertz resolution Blackman uh, window and uh, um, the source is channel 1 and uh, there's the peak there and if we go to the second menu and we go to the DBM load the, the load menu, let me go back, see the uh, load menu here, and I've got the unit set to DBM, and I've got right now the external load set to 1.5K. So based on 1.5K, my marker here, which is Y2, is showing it's approximately minus 5 DBM. So now I'm going to go and change that, and I'm going to change that to 50 ohms, and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to take that down to 50 ohms. So there it's at 50 ohms. And let's give it a second for, for it to uh, converge. And let's now go back to cursors, and let's measure what the peak of that is. So now it's saying the peak is 10 uh, plus 10 dBm. So let's go do some math, and let's take a look at that. First thing I want to do, though, let's find out what the amplitude of this waveform is. So I'm going to go ahead, hit my measure button. My statistics comes up. And if you look at the RMS value, it's roughly about 723, and uh, it looks as if it's going up slowly. It's roughly about 723 millivolts uh, RMS. So let's use that, and let's uh, calculate what the dBm is going to be into uh, 50 ohms and in 1500. Here's the calculation here, and uh, just one note. I did this prior to filming the video and I used 724 millivolts RMS and uh, uh, on the scope we're seeing a roughly about 723 but uh, it's it's close enough and I think we're gonna we're gonna get some meaningful values so basically the way you calculate DBM it's uh, the log of two power ratios where the um, you're comparing it to one milliwatt so now power, the output power versus input power, and the input power is in uh, uh, 1 milliwatt, is uh, V squared over R. And V squared over R has to be in milliwatts. So if we take a look at the uh, 50 ohm load, it's uh, 724 volts squared divided by 50 times uh, 1,000 because we want this value in, in uh, millivolts divided by one, uh, sorry, in milliwatts, divided by one milliwatt, that comes out to 10.2. 
DBM. We saw 10 DBM, so that's an agreement there. For 1,500 ohms, same calculation except R becomes 1,500 ohms, and the ratio comes out to be about 4.6, minus 4.6. We saw just over minus 5 dBm. So you can see the scope is actually using that um, uh, load, the uh, impedance that you dial in for calculating the dBm. So we could use this function to probe a circuit that's not 50 ohms. It could be uh, any impedance. As long as we know what the source and uh, load impedance is of the circuit, we can use the scope uh, 10x probe to probe the circuit and get us the DBM value.